Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. His name is Jeff Patterson. He's an author. He is a martial arts expert. He has a lot of knowledge when it comes to meditation and how to in incorporate meditation into your life so you could overcome the crisis in your life and you could obtain any level of success and joy into your life through meditation. And he's here today to talk about meditation and how meditation can help you reach all your goals and dreams in life and help you become successful and happy. So Jeff, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm really excited to hear what you have to say today. I'm a big fan of meditation and I, I use it on a daily basis. And I'm so glad you're here today to share your knowledge with us. Can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm here over here in Portland, Oregon. I've been running a martial arts and meditation center here now for about 30 years. And it's been a, a strong life passion of mine, you know, and I at a fairly young age, I was introduced to the meditative arts in a bit of a roundabout way. You know, I was 19 years old. I wasn't really interested in going down the meditative path and uh, it changed my whole life in many ways. And, you know, I, I used to be very much into Western boxing. And so I went to this boxing gym that was just a few blocks down the street here from my academy in Portland. And at a boxing gym, it's run a lot different than your traditional style fitness class in that it's not one teacher out in the front of the room training all the boxers. Usually there's four or five coaches in a decent sized gym. And each one of those coaches might have three or four fighters that they're working with. Mm -hmm. Well, at this one particular gym, one of the coaches that was there was a very well-known coach and created very high level competitors in both amateur and the professional arena. And, I really wanted to get to spend some time with him. And so I would always show up at the gym when I knew he was going to be there. I'd work really hard and try to get him to notice me and get to where he'd spend some time with me. And I followed him around for about three or four months. And finally, he started giving me some tips and showing me a few things. And it was only about maybe two to three weeks of getting to work with him when he said something to me that changed my life forever in that. He said, you know, if you really want to be a good boxer, you should start doing meditation and Tai Chi. Now, here I am, this 19-year-old kid who doesn't know much of anything, thinking, isn't Tai Chi for like old people in the park? How's that going to help me be a better fighter? <laughs> and, you know, I, ha I had a lot of respect for him. And I started doing the practice. And it's changed my path and my life in so many ways through the years. And here at the Academy, I've been very fortunate to have over 26,000 students come through the Academy. And I've literally heard hundreds of stories of how the meditative arts has positively influenced people's lives. And that's really what's given me the fuel and the passion to create my last couple of books and create my online program and my teacher training program is I'm just trying to get this message out there so people can really see the value and the benefit of meditation and realize that it's not something that, you know, you have to retire to a cave and meditate for the rest of your life. There's ways that we can integrate these practices into our day-to-day -day lives and really see a lot of benefits from it. And so that's that's what I'm all about right now. Well, I'm a big fan of meditation and applying it into your life. Like I was telling you before the show, I, you know, one of the main things that triggered my seizures for epilepsy was stress. And, you know, it was meditation that helped me create, create a level of calmness in my life where I was able to help control my seizures. And for me, it was a, a big ch a game changer in my health. Now, for people who want to incorporate it in their life on a daily basis, like you mentioned, what are some of the things people can do to incorporate meditation into their lives? Well, there's there's a lot of different directions you can take the practice. And first, I think having an understanding of the overall kind of spectrum of directions mm -hmm. to help find a path to follow is important. And so within the meditative arts, I have it broken down into kind of five categories of practice. There's the athletic path you can follow that helps improve your physical performance and your timing and your awareness. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of professional athletes these days are turning to the meditative arts to aid with this and help improve their percentages. 
Then you have the therapeutic side of the practice, which is good for health and longevity and dealing with injuries. And then you have the medical side of the practice. You know, all of Chinese medicine is based off of Qigong theory, which is one of the meditative practices. And then we have the philosophical side of the practice, which is something I've always been very passionate about. And then lastly, the spiritual side of the practice, which is what most people I think think of when they hear the term meditation. Mm -hmm. So when you have an idea of what path you want to follow, or maybe a combination of a couple paths, then what's important is to have a strategy of how we're going to integrate these practices into our day. And there's three modalities of practice that I think are essential for anybody to cultivate when they're building a meditation practice into their life. And they are having a ritual practice, which is something where you set a little bit of time aside every day. You know, the Dalai Lama once said that everybody should meditate for 20 minutes a day, unless you're too busy, then you should meditate for an hour. And I love mm -hmm. that saying, because having that consistent practice is really key for uh, cultivating the benefits of meditation. You know, a lot of times I'll hear people say, oh, you know, I, I tried meditation when I got stressed out or I had panic attacks, but it just didn't work for me. And it's kind of like saying, hey, I want an apple, so I'm going to go plant a seed and expect to eat it this afternoon. It doesn't <laughs> happen. You, you know, you have, to, you have to cultivate and lay the foundation. Mm -hmm. And so this is the first step. And then the second pillar, if you will, of practice is active practices. And these are things that we can do all day, every day. And it can be when you're walking down the street or even standing in line at the grocery store. And they could be as simple as breathing exercises, energetic circulations in the body, maybe spinal rotations, or maybe even a simple movement practice that could be done in as little as 60 seconds. Yeah. And these things are just to help us stay in that state of awareness throughout the day, because, you know, it makes no sense to meditate for 20 minutes or a half an hour every day if the rest of the day you're stressed out and worried about everything that's going on. And so these practices help us kind of keep that peaceful, aware state of mind in everything we do. Mm -hmm. And then the third pillar is the philosophical side of the training. And these are things that we can integrate into the day and also into our ritual practices. Nice. And having this idea of kind of the path to follow and how to integrate these practices into our life, I think would be one of the first steps you want to put a little bit of thought into. I like that. You know, everybody's different and, and what works for some people doesn't work for other people, but it's important that we take time out to really connect with ourselves. And, you know, it's nice when we can meditate and we can really, um, kind of block out the, our surroundings and really learn more about ourselves too. I find that meditation is not only great for your health and, and for your, um, and for your ability to understand yourself on a spiritual basis, but it also helps you health wise. It can help you um, in many different aspects. Now for you, like, what are some of the, the, the main benefits of incorporating um meditation on a daily basis into your life so people understand how powerful it could really be if you take it seriously and you do it on a routine basis you know there's so many benefits you know people could practice meditation because they want to improve their health and longevity or maybe they're dealing with a stress disorder they have panic attacks or um, they're dealing with depression um, or maybe somebody else who's wanting to improve their performance you know all of these are, are valid reasons some people come to it because they have high blood pressure or maybe arthritis you know um, there's a lot of different practices through movement practices, still practices, breath work, different things that you can integrate. And, you know, I like what you said is that, you know, not everything is good for everybody or fits certain people's kind of persona or their interests. And that's one of the beautiful things about meditation is that you know, there's movement practices like Tai Chi and Qigong and yoga. There's walking meditations, there's standing meditation, sitting meditation, breath work. There's so many different things that we can pull from 
what's important is just kind of understanding which things are going to help us down which path, yeah. you know, because meditation is a very deep path. You know, I've been studying this stuff for 36 years and I'm still just a student learning all the time, you know, and it's one yeah. of those things where you, you really need to have a guide to kind of help point you and help you navigate through the, the training because, you know, I've, been running this academy now for 30 years and I've had students come into the academy who have been self-taught and trying to do meditation on their own. They've been practicing for 15, even 20 years. And oftentimes they'll come in and they'll see somebody who's only been practicing for six or 12 months. And in a lot of ways, they're further along in their practice because they've had a direction and a path to follow you know, and there's so many videos out there on YouTube and, and apps to listen to and all of these things, which in a way can be helpful if you have a guide to point you down the right path. And if you don't, you know, you can easily spend 10, 15 years of your life and just kind of never get past the surface. Right. And so having that direction is, is really important. And and I like what you said earlier too is that you know you can't expect it all to happen right away. And you use the apple and the seed as an example. I remember when I first started to learn meditation and and to incorporate it in my life, I was taking classes, and it literally took me to the end of the class just to start feeling that level of calmness and and relaxation. And everybody would be getting up, getting ready to leave the class. And I'm like, wait, where's everybody going? I'm I'm just starting. Wait, I, I'm starting to feel good now, you know. And uh, it's you know. For for some people, you know, depending on, you know, your mentality and how busy your life is and what's going on in your life, everybody's different. And, you know, is it, is it, is there a standard type of meditation that you teach people that they can, they can kind of adjust and apply to their own, own lifestyle? Um, or is there, is there, it really is various types and you really have to figure out which one is best for you, or can you take a little of each and kind of like make a personalized meditation for yourself? I, I think every meditation practice should be evolving and what you do today will not be the same as what you're doing in a year and five years and 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. However, I think there's different meditative practices that are good for different outcomes. And when we understand how to use these different practices and the science behind it, mm -hmm. then we can do specific practices to help us accomplish different things. Right. You know, for example, in any meditative practice, and it doesn't matter which path you're following. Mm -hmm. There's five core fundamental principles that you need to cultivate when building a practice. And I call them the five regulations. Mm -hmm. They're regulating the body, regulating the breath, regulating the mind, regulating the energy and regulating the spirit. And briefly, I'll kind of touch on what I mean when I say those. Mm -hmm. So regulating the body is the easiest one to understand. And it's the quickest one to see a lot of immediate results for from. And so that's what we usually start with a newer student. And an example of that would be, think about a time maybe when you're sitting in front of your computer for three or four hours mm -hmm. and your shoulders are rounded forward and you're feeling lethargic and a little bit depleted. Yeah. And then another time when the most important person in your world walks in the room and your body perks up and you feel this rush of energy and you feel great. Well, these two different energetic states, we are in a hundred percent control of all day, every day. And by understanding how to regulate the body and adjust our skeletal alignment and our muscular tension and our breath and our awareness, we can regulate these states and give us different physical, mental, and emotional outcomes throughout the day. And this is kind of a surface level of regulating the body. On a little deeper level, it involves creating some kind of uh, muscular awareness and, and tone, flexibility, um, make, making sure that we're getting a healthy diet and appropriate sleep. All of those things are kind of in what I call that body regulation. Right. Then we have regulating the breath. And regulating the breath is a very deep science. It's something that you'll study for the rest of your life if you take on a meditation practice. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes, Qigong is referred to as the science of the breath 
because there's literally hundreds of different breathing strategies. And the goal is, is to understand how these strategies affect us so we can use them to balance our states. Mm -hmm. So for example, we kind of broadly categorize these breathing strategies into yin methods and yang methods. Yin methods are often deeper, more holistic style of meditations. And an example of the yin breath would be if you ever listen to somebody sleep, their natural breathing pattern is a longer inhale and a shorter exhale. And this is the body's natural way of bringing that energy inward, which is very good for stress reduction. It's good for creativity. It's good for kind of bringing us back in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so understanding how to use this is very good to cultivate these kinds of energies in our practice. Then we have the yang side of the breath, which is more aggressive. And it's kind of like if you've ever had to push your car, or you pick up something heavy, your natural instinct is to exhale and put tension in the breath, maybe even make the breath audible. Yeah. Now, when we can learn how to use this breathing strategy, and in Chinese philosophy, they call this balancing the khan and li or the water and fire. Mm -hmm. Now we can use the breath to regulate our different physical, mental, and emotional outcomes. And so this is a very valuable tool in our practice, both for ritual and active purposes. Then the next stage is regulating the mind. And regulating the mind, as with the breath, is a very deep, lifelong practice. And, you know, one of the most common things I hear people say when they're doing meditation is that, or they've tried it before, is that, ah, you know, I tried meditation or I'm, I'm doing it, but I just can't quiet my mind. I'm not very good at it mm -hmm. or it didn't work for me. You know, and somewhere along the way, people got this misconception that in order to be good at meditation, you have to reach this state of nirvana and have nothing else bother you. And, mm -hmm. you know, it couldn't be further from the truth. I, I've personally been training for 36 years. I've traveled around the world many times training with some really amazing meditation practitioners. And I have never once met anybody who doesn't get distracted. You know, we all do. It's the way of being human, you know? And so when you can make that realization and understand that you're not failing when that happens, that's a very important point to understand. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're doing your sitting practice or a movement practice like a Qigong set, you may get distracted 50 times in a 20 minute session. Every time you get distracted, you recognize that imbalance. You use your posture, your breath, your movement, whatever it is to bring you back to center. And now you just got 50 repetitions of being out of balance and coming back to center. And if you do that every day, every month, every year, you start to develop this power and this awareness to be almost unshakable where nothing can bother you. Right. And now if somebody says something to throw you off your game or you have a stressful day at work, it's easy to come back to center and find that balance. Right. You know, there's this, uh, there's this story I really enjoy about these two old monks mm -hmm. and they're walking down this dirt road after a huge rainstorm. They come up to this big mud puddle, and on the other side of the puddle is this beautiful little girl standing there in a white dress, and she's crying. And the older of the two monks, he yells across the puddle and says, is everything okay? Can we help you? And she says, I need to be somewhere, and if I walk across this puddle, I'm going to get my dress all dirty. <laughs> so the older monk, he rolls up his pant legs, and he walks across the puddle, and he picks her up, puts her on his back, and takes her to the other side, and sets her down and she's off on her way. Well, him and the younger monk are walking a couple miles down the road. And finally, the younger monk is just furious. And he says, you know, we're not supposed to touch girls, but yet you did back there at the puddle. And he looks down and he says, you're still thinking about that girl. I left her back there at the puddle. <laughs> and how many times in life do we have to get two miles down the muddy road before we finally realize we got to let go of this thing? Or, you know, we yeah. got to, go back on to a positive path. And, and so understanding how to recognize these imbalances and having the tools to come back to center is very important part of the training. Mm -hmm. Then the fourth regulation is regulating the energy. And this is an extremely deep topic and something that we could literally talk for hours about. But a basic idea is 
with a lot of meditations, we lead the energy inward, we extend it outward, or we circulate it through the body in some more advanced practices. And in order to do this, we have to reach a competent level in regulating the body, the breath, and the mind. And once we've done this, then we can lead the energy in the body to get these different expressions and outcomes. And then the fifth and final stage of the regulation is regulating the spirit. And this is very profound, and it's something that meditation masters and monks will spend their entire life's journey working towards that stage of enlightenment. And when you understand these five regulations and see how cultivating these can help deepen your practice, now you can see that getting into the meditative arts can affect anything we do in life and is extremely powerful in helping us in really anything. Wow. That's very powerful. You know, when you think about all the different types of meditation there is and, and how the more advanced you become, the more you could utilize it in many different ways. And I especially love what you talked about when you talked about the story of the two monks and the little girl, because you know, so many people hold on to the past and so many people have a hard time letting go. And that's one of the reasons so many people are, are stuck in life and not able to move forward and enjoy life to their full potential, you know, for, for you and your own, your own practice, you know, and working with other clients, what do you feel is the most powerful type of meditation to, for someone to try to practice and learn that could help people with letting go of the past and letting go of things that occurred in their life that are holding them back from really reaching their true potential in life? You know, I, I don't think there is, if you're asking for a technique, I don't think there's any one technique that helps with that. I think okay. it's the idea of having the living the lifestyle mm. you know the meditative arts is not meant to be a hobby that we do once or twice a week right it's meant to be something that we integrate into our life and see how all of the fruit starts to blossom right mm -hmm. and and so by having that consistency and that awareness in our day-to-day -day lives is where the true benefit starts you know anytime somebody new comes to the practice I always have three things that I like them to consider. You know, I've, I've been very fortunate to be able to help a lot of people with the meditative arts. And one of the most challenging things for me being a teacher is that I know a lot of people are undisciplined and it's very mm -hmm. difficult to have anybody change the habit of doing something every day, you right. know? And so I have three questions that I'll have them contemplate. And by doing that, I find that I see a lot more success and see people benefiting more from the practice. And the first one is have them think about, or you, if you're listening, think about why you're being drawn to the practice and why you want to take on this practice. Do you want to stay healthier into your later years to watch your grandkids grow up? Or are you dealing with some kind of a stress disorder or health issue that you need to work through? Or do you want to improve your performance on the field? And now not just why, but how will your life change in every angle if you do accomplish this and how will it get better? And then also think about how will your life be changing for the negative if you don't make this change and all of the things that will happen if you don't. And if you do this and really spend some effort and time thinking about this, it'll help give you the fuel to have that motivation behind your practice, which leads to the next step, which is developing that consistency in our daily rituals and active practices. Because that consistent practice that we do every day is where all the true gold is at in meditation. And you can do that with a sitting practice, with a movement practice like Qigong or Tai Chi or, or whatever it is. And through that consistency, we develop this discipline and integrity and perseverance that not only affects us in our practice, but it feeds over into everything we do in life. And so this is really important. And then the third and final thing, which we already kind of touched on a little bit is you have to find a guide. You have to find somebody to help point you in the right direction because 
it is an extremely deep practice and it's been not only something I've been passionate about, but it's been my profession and I've put thousands and thousands of hours into studying and training with teachers and I'm still just a student learning all the time. You know, it's such a deep practice. And to think that you're going to go on to YouTube as a beginner <laughs> and figure out how to do this practice and have any kind of effective results, you're kind of kidding yourself. And so if you do those three things and you think about your why and you understand the importance of consistency and you find a guide, Mm -hmm. You'll really reap the benefits. And as you're asking what you could do, that's the foundation of what you can do more so than the, any specific practice. I like that. Is there a better time in the day to meditate or it does it really even matter? There are different times that give you different outcomes. So for example, in the morning, when uh, dawn first changes and the sun starts to come up, this is the most powerful time during the day when the ionic exchange in the air is going on. And this creates a certain kind of energy that is very good to tap into. In the At noontime, it's very yang. Everything is very up. And there's a lot of times why people start to feel stressed during the middle of the day. So this is a good time to do a yin practice. Mm -hmm. In the evening, before we go to sleep, this is a good time to do some yin breathing exercises to help settle the mind down and help Pre prepare us for a good night's sleep. So there's different practices you can do at different times in the day. And that's why it's so important to understand the science behind what we're doing with meditation. Mm -hmm. So we can incorporate different practices to get different outcomes. I love it. Now tell me a little about the two books that you wrote. So my most recent book is the yielding warrior. And it's one that, uh, I've, I've been very passionate about for a long time. Yielding is this very fascinating concept in the meditative arts and also in the martial arts. Mm -hmm. And in my book, The Yielding Warrior, I've broken it down into three categories. We have physical yielding, mental yielding, and emotional yielding. Mm -hmm. Physical yielding is the idea that I push you, you push me, whoever's a bigger, stronger person with the most leverage eventually is going to push the other person over. Right. But with yielding, instead of us trying to see who the bigger meathead is, mm -hmm. when you push me, I get out of the way of that force. And now I can respond with less effort. So I'm not trying to butt heads with you and see if I'm bigger and stronger than you. Right. Now, it's obvious how this is beneficial in any kind of athletics, because it doesn't matter what sport you play, there's going to be athletes that are bigger and stronger than you. And you have to learn how to yield to this force mm -hmm. to put yourself in the advantage position so you can respond and get the upper hand. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to really be good at physical yielding, a lot of things have to come into play. You need to be well-rooted. The lower part of your body needs to be strong and flexible so you can change your central equilibrium without getting tight. The body has to be relaxed, the breath has to be calm, and the mind has to be present. Mm -hmm. While this may take a lifetime to really master these skills, from day one, by integrating meditation into your life, you start to recognize these things inside yourself more clearly. And this is where it becomes very interesting because not only do you see these things more clearly inside yourself, but you also start to see them more clearly in other people. So say, for example, you and I are having a conversation and I say something that unsettles you and I pick up on it right from that first imbalance. It's a lot easier to adjust the conversation and keep us in a happy place than if I'm not paying attention to that. And pretty soon I'm so far off track, you want to slap me upside the head. Mm -hmm. And so Learning how to use yielding in all of our interactions is extremely powerful. One, you're being more considerate, which is something that we could all do more of. And two, it allows you to be strategic in your interactions and lead conversations to a positive outcome with the least amount of resistance. And this is beneficial in our relationships, in business, in sales, and negotiations. I mean, there's so many different applications of this. This would be what I call mental yielding. 
Then the third area of yielding is very much like mental yielding, but it's with our own interpersonal conflicts. So if you think about oftentimes something will happen to us and we'll respond and we'll go down this path and we might get an hour, a day, a week down that road and realize maybe that wasn't the best choice. Yeah. But with yielding and our heightened awareness and our ability to stay present, it's easier to come from a centered state when something happens to us, evaluate the scenario and make a more educated choice without letting our emotions get involved. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times this can save us a lot of heartache on the other side. Right. You know, and I've been explaining this idea of yielding now for many, many years, running the academy here for over 30 years. And one of the most common things I'll hear people say is, yeah, yielding makes a lot of sense. In fact, I do yielding all the time. <laughs> well, I would agree. And I think everybody does some degree of yielding all of the time, whether they understand that's what they're doing or not. Right. However, it's kind of like, if you or I were to walk into a crime scene with a detective who's been on the job for 30 years, mm -hmm. I guarantee you that person would see things about the series of events and the timeline that I know at least I would have no clue of. Right. And the meditative arts helps us see things inside of ourselves and inside of other people that I truly believe most people will go through life and never have any clue of unless they adopt this kind of a practice in their life. And that's kind of what the the yielding warrior is all about. I love it. I love it. And and what about the other book that you wrote? Can you tell us a little about that book too? Yeah, it's a book on kind of philosophical sayings that talk about how to integrate some of these practices into your life. You know, and the you know I mentioned earlier that the the philosophical path of meditation is one I've always been very intrigued by because these strategies and these practices of studying these different sayings and different thought processes are really helpful, I think, to open up your mind to, yeah. to many different directions and start seeing things from different angles. And so it's mm -hmm. something that's always been a passion of mine. One of my very first meditation teachers he used to give me these sayings to memorize and, you know, I do them every day and go through them in my head and say them out loud. And it's funny doing this kind of practice because you'll do something, for example, you'll memorize this saying and you'll think, ah, it means this. And then five years later, by cultivating your practice and becoming more aware of what's going on, you'll look at that same saying with a whole different light and different perspective. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things that meditation really helps us do is it helps us kind of see things with a more clear perspective and see it from different angles because, you know, our personal views are pretty narrow. You know, there's 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 not and there's a lot of smart people out there and I'm not trying to put anybody down. Right. But you know, we all see things through our vision and my vision is going to be different than yours. And if I'm not open to that and present and listen and really try to understand where you're coming from, mm -hmm. I can miss out on a lot on what could be very beneficial to me. And so I think by having meditation in your life and having that level of awareness really is one of the many gifts that, that comes from the practice. Yes. Oh, I, I agree a hundred percent. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? So we have our uh, physical location here in Portland where we have an academy and, and teach the, the meditative arts in uh, my online program. Uh, I teach people how to build an evolving life practice with the meditative arts through movement practices, sitting practices, standing meditations, breath work, using some of this philosophical approach and build a practice and help you follow whatever one of those five paths that you want to follow. So that way you have a focused direction with your practice and you accomplish the most that you can in the shortest amount of time. Right. You know, it's it's so easy, as I mentioned, to get distracted and go off in a different direction. Whereas if you have that guide and that approach, it can really help you on 
accomplish a lot in a very short amount of time. Right. And then also on the online membership portal, there is a teacher training program that will show you how to not only have a deeper understanding of these arts and uh, build your own practice, but also understand how to teach these and build the business within something that you're doing. Because here at the Academy, we really have four businesses here. We have our um, our adult striking program, our Brazilian jiu-jitsu program, our meditation program, and then our kids program. And our meditation program is just one of the pillars here, which generates about 35% of the overall um, revenue for the academy. And the great thing about it for the people out there with say a martial arts studio or a yoga studio is you can target a lot of clients that you're not going to get and that you're not targeting because in that program, you get a lot of people that are 50, 60, 70, even some 80 and 90 year olds wow. that come into this program that are very well established and they're focused in life and they know what they want. And they're great students to work with because they are consistent and they, you know, they have reached that point in life where there's fewer distractions. And right. so it really can be very beneficial to an existing business. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now, from our conversation today, if you had to overlook everything that we talked about, what are some important aspects that you'd like to emphasize on? I think the most important thing is if you're looking to integrate meditation, think about those three things we talked about, your why, the consistency, and a guide. And if you do that and you stay consistent with a meditation practice for at least a year, I guarantee you it will be one of the best things you've ever done for yourself and you'll do it for the rest of your life. You know, when I have students come in here and they listen to me and they say, they, you know, they, when I say that do a 20 minute a day ritual, integrate some of these active practices and mm -hmm. they keep that up every day. I bet at least 95 to 97% of them will do a meditation practice for the rest of their life because they see so many benefits right. by developing that consistency that they would be crazy to stop. And so right. take the time, invest in yourself, and you will always be grateful you did. I love it. That's, that's amazing. Now, where can people find you? Uh, my website is theyieldingwarrior.com. If you'd like to get a free copy of my most recent book, you could go to theyieldingwarrior.com forward slash book and just pay for shipping and we'll send you out a free copy of the book. And that's also where you can get into our online programs as well. Wonderful. Well, this has been amazing, Jeff. I, I really appreciate your time on the show today. You've really given us a, a very broad and informational um, episode where I've learned a lot through you. And I know a lot about meditation, but you've really, really expanded and took over a, a, a lot of different things and, and the importance of each aspect of meditation and how it can be utilized in so many different ways. And for that, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing all this information and sharing, you know, taking in the time to, to help so many people through the practice of meditation. So thank you so much, Jeff, for being part of our show. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. You too.